Now that I've learned so much about the slope and the y-intercept of a linear equation, and I can put it in slope-intercept form, I'd like to use that information to graph an equation very quickly, rather than using ordered pairs or the intercept method. Let's say that I give you the slope of a line is equal to 3 fifths, and its y-intercept is 0 comma negative 1. The equation that fits that, or that models that, is y equals 3 fifths x minus 1. To graph that, though, let's use this data. If the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 1, that's that ordered pair. From there, you know that the slope, which is 3 fifths, is defined as the change in y over the change in x. And so in this particular circumstance, in the y direction, you want to go a positive 3, and in the x direction, you want to go a positive 5 from this point. So let's go up 3, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and put another ordered pair down, and let's connect the points, let's connect those two ordered pairs, and we have a graph of this linear equation. I haven't been doing this every time. It's something that you should be conscious or aware of, that it's often good to state the name of the equation that you have graphed. It is very, very easy to graph when something is in slope-intercept form. Let's continue. Let's do another. Let's say that I give you that the slope of a line is a negative 4 fifths, and its y-intercept is 0 comma 6. So let's go ahead and first plot that ordered pair. I guess before I do that, I'm just going to state that the equation that models this is a negative 4 fifths x plus 6. So I put in the slope. I put in my y-intercept. I'm always going to graph that point first. So that's right there, 0 comma 6. When the slope is negative, you need to recognize that that just represents a negative number. You can either put the negative sign with the numerator or you can put the negative sign with the denominator, but not both. A lot of people think that a negative slope means that when they move from this ordered pair, they should go in the negative direction both in the y and x direction. That's not the case. A negatively sloping line in this particular case, my change in y says to go down a 4 or a negative 4, but in the x direction it says to go a positive 5, which is to the right. So from this point right here, if I'm using that as my slope, I should go down 1, 2, 3, 4, that's my negative 4, and then go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right. If I had chosen to use a slope of a negative 4 fifths as a positive 4 over a negative 5, then from the y-intercept, I would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and then to the left 2, 3, 4, 5, points, and I would get the graph of the same line. I see here that this line goes through all three of those ordered pairs, and I have graphed the line where y equals a negative 4 fifths x plus 6. I haven't mentioned it yet, but I hope that you notice that a negatively sloping line looks like this, and a positively sloping line is one that goes like that. Let's do another problem where I give it to you in slope-intercept form. So let's say that I give you y equals 2 fifths x minus 3. You know then that the slope of this line is a positive 2 over a positive 5, and that the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 3. So let's start with that point right there. There's the 0, negative 3. The slope is the change in y is a positive 2, and the change in x is a positive 5. So from that ordered pair, Go up 2, and then go to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you have two ordered pairs. It's so simple. Graph the, the y-intercept. Um, from that, move um, in the direction for the change in y over the change in an x, and plot in the other ordered pair, and then state that this is the graph of the line y equals 2 fifths x minus 3. Let's try one with a negative slope. And then finally one that you have to rearrange. So let's go with y equals a negative 3 halves x plus 2. So you know that the slope of this line is either a negative 3 over a positive 2, or you might use a positive 3 over a negative 2. doesn't matter which one you use. The y-intercept is 0 comma 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plot the y-intercept. 
And then I'm going to first use this. So in the y direction, I'm going to go down 3. And in the x direction, I'm going to go to the right, a positive 2. So down 3 and to the right, a positive 2. And connect the dots. Had I chosen to go in the y direction from here, a positive 3, and then in the x direction to the left 2, 1, 2, I'd have been right there and gotten the graph of the same line. If an equation is not in slope-intercept form, I get it that way because I love graphing linear equations in this form. So if I don't give it to you in this form, please make it happen for you. So I have 2x plus y equals 1. And I want to get y alone, so I'm going to solve this equation for y by subtracting 2x from both sides of this equation, from both sides of the equal sign. That gets rid of the x term over here, and y is all alone. Please notice that I kind of positioned my x term in front of that positive 1 that is a constant, so that I could see this in y equals mx plus b form. And if ever you have an integer here, not a fraction, then just stick a 1 in the denominator so that you can see that the slope of this line is a negative 2 over a positive 1, or if you wanted to use a positive 2 over a negative 1, you could, and the y-intercept is 0, 1. So when x is 0, y is 1, that's right there. And if I use this negative 2 over a positive 1, then I'm going to go down 2 and to the right 1. If I had used this positive 2 and then to the left 1, I'd have gotten the same thing. And here is the graph of 2x plus y equals 1. We've learned how to graph by uh, um, creating a list of ordered pairs. We chose to use 3 so that we could check with the third point to see if they were all in a straight line. We've learned to graph using the intercept method. And finally, we've learned to graph by getting an equation in slope-intercept form and first graphing the y-intercept and from that point moving in the y over the x direction to establish the slope of the line. I love this method. I hope you do too, and I hope you'll master this one uh, as best as possible.